Hello everyone, welcome to your fourth semester. I am Peer Zada Shwab and I will be teaching you ECE 253C. It's a core course in your fourth semester, microprocessors and microcontrollers. I have already distributed a course uh, brochure or an outlet. Uh, share that on your Google Classrooms. I hope you have gone through it. Let me begin with giving a bit of information about the course first. The course name you are familiar now microprocessors and microcontrollers EC, course code is ec253c it's a core course and will carry three credits and all the three credits are theory so there might be a mistake in ltp003 it's actually 030 so there will be actually three hours per week of lectures and subsequent discussions all the lectures will be online. Prerequisites to the course are basic programming skills and digital electronics, which you have studied in your first, uh, first and uh, first and third semesters. The course contents we will be uh, going to discuss in few minutes, and recommended books I will also be discussing about few in few minutes. So let me start with microprocessors and microcontrollers two terms microprocessors and microcontrollers in the pre uh, course survey i did almost 70 and 80 percent of students said that we have heard about the term microprocessors and somehow we know what microprocessors are so a term microprocessor on one hand we have microprocessors microprocessors And on the other hand, we have another term, microcontrollers, which 80% of the students said in the pre-course survey that they have never heard about this term, microcontrollers. There is another term which is very much, very much similar to these terms, microprocessor, which is very much similar to the term microprocessor, and almost used interchangeably. Uh, in today's uh, time in today's times that is processor let me write that down processor and from processor or processors there is another related term which we uh, most of our familiar which in fact all of us are familiar with the term is uh, why are what are processors associated with why are processors used? They are used in computer systems. Computer systems. Okay, good. Computer systems, they can be laptops, they can be desktops, but they can even be your mobiles. They are also computers. There are other computers also. It's another term I want to discuss in this class, in this very lecture. That term is embedded systems. So far, so good. We have five terms. And most of our, uh, us are familiar with two of them or maybe three of them computer systems processors microprocessors most of you might have heard micro the term microcontrollers and embedded system first time let's try to relate all these terms we all know that processors and microprocessors are somewhat similar or same or exactly same so microprocessors have actually been derived from processors Then computer systems, they are directly, they are uh, actually directly associ associated with processors because they are built around processors. Fine. What are embedded systems? We have not formally described or defined embedded systems. But let, you have to take my word on this for now. Embedded systems are also a type of computer systems. They are also computers, but a very special type. So actually, 
embedded systems are also computers so they are also related a subset of computers and now what are microcontrollers what are processors to computer systems processors are to computer systems similarly microcontrollers are to embedded systems Microcontrollers have same relation with embedded systems what processors or microprocessors have computer with computer systems in the sense that computer systems are designed around microprocessors embedded systems are designed around microcontrollers and we might guess there might maybe some uh, kind of uh, relationship between microprocessors and microcontrollers maybe there's a common word common prefix micro so let me connect them also in functionality also they are very similar we are going to discuss that in in a couple of minutes so there's a very neat cycle very neat kind of relationship we have computer systems we all know what computer systems are and they are built around processors we know that and these processors and microprocessors are same in case of laptops and desktops they are used interchangeably and then uh, i have told you that microprocessors and microcontrollers are very much similar in their functionality we have not discussed that so far and also i have told that microcontrollers are built around uh, microcontrollers are necessary for embedded systems Microcontrollers are at the center of embedded systems in the same way as microprocessors are at the center of computer systems or computers and also I have told that embedded systems are actually a type of computer systems so from two terms microprocessors and microcontrollers we have now five terms let me try to explain all these five terms and these five terms which actually create a basis of our whole course our whole course will be revolving around these five basic terms microprocessors microcontrollers processors computer systems or computers and embedded systems so what's a computer let me start with the most familiar one computer what basically is a computer it's a machine good or to be more specific it's a programmable machine it responds to, a sp to some input depending upon the instructions it has it's a computing device we can also say it's a computing device it's a program emission, it's a computing device. What are the examples of these computers? Have we used a computer? Do we use a computer in our everyday life lives? Of course, yes. Our laptops. Our desktops. These are the computers, of course. These are the computing devices. These are the programming machines. We call them computers. Also, our mobile phones, our mod modern smartphones, they are also computers. Smartphones. So far, so good. What are these computers made of? And what do they do? These computers are basically made of at the center of these computers is a central processing unit or we call that processor or a microprocessor for that matter. We have we also have we also have some kind of memory inside it memory. We have some kind of storage, hard drive. These are essential items. 
what else we have in a computer system input output we have a monitor we have a keyboard we have a mouse so there are input output ports to which we connect our input output devices there might be other things for example there's a power source or a power supply or a power unit and maybe some other things let's not go into details so a processor some memory and hard so we have actually uh, in a computer system we have a pro processor to that processor we attach some memory some storage devices input output ports and we have a computer system our laptop our desktop in fact our smartphones also so so we have a co complete computer system and these computer systems at the at the center of and at the core of uh, these computer systems we have central processing units and these central pro processing units are actually our processors this central process unit unit is actually our processor or a microprocessor so let me let let me try to define this microprocessor what exactly is a microprocessor what is it i can write it's a silicon chip or an ic that contains the cpu good and in the world of personal computers as i have already said the term microprocessor and processor are used interchangeably and this microprocessor is exactly actually a silicon chip that contains the central processing unit and what's the job of central processing unit to execute instructions how exactly it executes instructions what kind of instructions what is the internal hardware will actually constitute the first unit of our course so so far so good okay let's move on we have already defined these computer systems we now know what are these computer systems we also know what are these processors and microprocessors that leaves us with two more terms microcontrollers and embedded systems the computers we are talking about our laptops and desktops do we find similar kind of computers anywhere else in our homes in our offices in our universities or while going to work do we find in uh, industries somewhere similar kind of devices that have similar kind of functions that actually take some input do some type of computing execute instructions have a software that gets executed that is run and we have a, we have some type of output depending upon those instructions and the type of input do we have anything any idea let me take an example let me take an example of a microwave microwave or for that matter let me take an example of an ac or a xerox machine isn't a computer isn't there a computer inside all three isn't there a computer inside a microwave which actually takes the inputs from the user in terms of button presses and change in specific type of output like the amount of heat the temperature it has to create inside the microwave the time the number of times it has to rotate the panel the amount of time it has to turn it on the other things similarly in an ac isn't there a computer which takes the inputs both from the user in terms of ir remote and also from the atmosphere 
uh, also takes input as the ambient temperature then tries to cool or heat the temperature to uh, heat, uh, cool or heat the room to the set temperature isn't there a computer which actually reads the data maybe from the sensor temperature sensor or from the handheld remote and then it create and then it changes into uh, this input data to a specific output isn't there a computer inside a xerox machine which actually takes the input from the user as do i have to copy number of copies the size enlarging other things from which tray i have to select the paper other things and then change my input into mechanical motion so that i get the required prints isn't there a computer but what is the major difference between these type of computers we can find hundreds of these computers isn't there a computer inside a atm machine which takes the inputs from the user reads the uh, chip inside a atm card connects the internet to the servers of the bank checks the balance displays uh, some contents on the screen isn't there a computer inside but what's the basic difference there are a lot of difference for a but for a person looking from outside the major difference is in the functionality while the computers like laptops and desktops they are more general purpose they are more general purpose laptops and desktops laptops and desktops PCs, what we call as PCs, or personal computers, they are general purpose computers. They are very general purpose in the sense we can use them for anything. We write a document, we edit a document, we read a PDF. We listen to music, we watch a video, we even take pictures, we browse, connect to the internet and browse, we write a program, we do simulations, general purpose, we can do anything, any input, vary types, we can vary types of jobs we can do, they are general purpose. And what's it, on the other hand? What type of computers we have inside microwaves, inside ACs, inside Xerox machines, inside ATM machines and hundred other exam, hundreds of other devices like these. These computers, one thing they are embedded in something else. They are embedded, there is a computer inside an AC. A computer has been embedded inside an AC, inside a Xerox machine, which is a part of functionality of the total Xerox machine. And there's an embedded computer inside an ATM machine. There's an embedded computer inside a microwave. And these computers, they have a very specific job in terms of microwave. Very specific job. Taking the inputs, a particular type of input, and changing their a particular type of output. This computer, this can't write program. We can't write programs on it. We can't listen to music there. On an AC, different types of inputs. Different types of inputs output but again a very specific type of job again in a xerox machine a very specific type of job again in atm machine maybe a couple of uh, maybe it has two or three jobs checking the balance getting uh, uh, taking out the mo money or maybe even depositing the money at two three jobs but again a very limited number of jobs not general purpose so these systems are known as embedded systems.